in three, two, and we're live. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello there, guys, I guess. Um, this may or may not be Castlevania. Well, my name is not Castlevania. Nope. I am. <laughs> I am your boy, Lefrofro, doing a, another Castlevania run in this marathon. I think the last one I did was Dawn of Sorrow, maybe. I don't like. I don't even know. Um, so yeah, but the, this run is going to be much much different than like most of the Metroidvania runs, simply because there is like a lot of different kind of tricks that uh, I will kind of not explain throughout the run because like most of the like most of the strats to explain take much longer than the actual usage of it I would say um which is okay um I guess kind of fast but really also yeah we're not playing the main character of this game um instead we are playing the second character uh, called Albus. Um, Albus has a lot of. It's like the mus much squishier character, but uh, in that regards, he is like super fast in terms of movement. Also, like certain abilities are kind of broken, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I should probably also really. So are you just uh, hanging out here? Or like... Yeah, actually I am. I'm waiting for you to call time. Oh, cool. Alright. Uh, let's just rename this classic... Uh, to the classic original Dijon farm. So I'm oh, no. going to be ready in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And go. So, um, so Albus mode. So, here's the, like the first instant that you see the basic movements of this game. Um, you can teleport around by just touching the the screen on your DS. And what it does is it costs a map. It costs MP. But um, the gimmick of this uh, game in general is like all of your attacks and certain moves uh, costs MP, but they also refuel really quickly, which is a kind of cool aspect of the game, to be honest. Like, most of the classic Metro Metroidvanias have uh, either sub-weapons or souls or parts, yeah. Like, all the different kinds of aspects. So, um, so yeah, I haven't, like, I haven't picked up this game a long, damn long time ago. I think it was, it was around four or five months in general. Um, so yeah, this is the first boss fight. Uh, I call it the Amor Um It's like one of these super quick fights where you you just saw like a glimpse of the additional attacks uh, that you can do throughout the run. Um, like, that fight was super, so fast, like, yeah, it's kinda hard to explain stuff, so, um, so you have, like, four different kinds of attacks, I would consider attacks, to be honest, so the first one is, like, the normal shot, uh, like, that I'm doing right there, and those normal shots, like, fire rapidly fast, which is kinda cool, but uh, it also, uh, uh, like costs, it doesn't cost that much MP. Like the la later in the game you are, the more time, like the longer you can cast it, which is pretty cool. Um, then you have a skill called Optical Shot, which is a kind of split shot. Um, which let me, I'm going to use it uh, on the next boss. So what this does is it's a light element uh, attribute attack. Which light attribute in this game is kind of good. Um, like most of them 
bosses in the game are dark elements. Um, it also has like the like the projectile of it moves really strange. Some like it first like it puts like it puts like two of those balls into the center and then it fires right away in some sign of. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's the optical shot, and this is another attack called the Blaze Kick, and I messed up this boss fight super bad, but okay. Um, the Blaze Kick is probably pretty much like the most overpowered skill in the entire game, I would say. Um, it gives you iframes, which you may have noticed that I'm getting. Um, I'm using this skill mainly for damage output, if it's actually worth it worth it. Um, it also is the w only ability that doesn't cost any MP. It only costs hearts. And yeah. The reason for that, like, uh, why, like, the amount of waste kicks I do is, like, super important in the, in the early game is, like, I kind of want to have, like, a specific amount for a, bo a, bo a boss, um, which comes up later on. Um, but yeah, so here's the lighthouse. We're going to. Uh, there is another boss coming up called uh, Brachyura. Um, Brachyura is pretty much an auto scroller boss, but you can like. Look, I can pretty much skip his attacks if you deal enough damage. So, let me check. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm using optical shots. Um, like I'm placing them into like a very specific spot. So it gets like 4 or 5 hits in. And what it makes, what it does, like if you deal enough damage to the crab, you will just turn red and try to destroy the ceiling. Also, yeah, watch out for the crabs. This guy gets it. So, like, I have to wait until the ceiling is destroyed before I can deal damage to him again. I mean, I can technically do it much earlier, but uh, I would say like he has like three health bars um, because you cannot kill him the normal way. I would say. Um, but yeah, so here I'm waiting until like most of the ceiling is, has disappeared, so it reduces the lag quite a lot. This is a strat that I figured out um, like two or three weeks ago. Um, usually like this game is not that, like it doesn't lag quite a lot, except for this part. Like this part is pretty much like the worst when it comes to performance. Maybe there's another, like there's another room in the large cavern that kind of does that, but we're not going to visit this place. Okay, so... So, that is pretty much like the only way to kill the boss. Like, just... Press down on the elevator and... Just destroy his legacy. And, yeah. Um, so, like, I got a pretty good frame right there. Like, this is pretty much like when when you do this fight perfectly, the only thing that really matters is um, on what frame you actually hit the uh, you hit the down button. Um, you usually want to do it as fast as possible because yeah. Um, also, water physics, by the way. Um, So yeah, the reason why you want uh, to kill like, the crab is like, or, like hit switch as soon as possible is, um, okay, that's bad. Okay, where was I? So like the reason why you want to hit the switch early is like you want him to kill, you want to kill the crab when he's red. If he, if he is, like like switching between green and red, and or he is green, it. Turns out that like there's much more blood spilled on the screen, and this kind of lags the game. 
So it's like pretty much a double punishment for being super bad. Like, like pretty much this game doesn't really allow errors in general. Uh, in like for Albus and for Shinoa. So yeah, um, this is one of the actually harder areas to get past by, even though it you can pretty much teleport around. Um, that is pretty much due to the like those uh, scout butterflies, I would I would call them. I think they have a I don't know what their name is, but yeah. Um, if you like do one really bad teleport, you will get hit, and then everything in this move uh, in this room. Moves around differently. Also, yeah, uh, this is pretty much like the spookiest place in the entire game. I mean, it's called Skeleton Cave. I mean, what do you have? What do you expect? Like, only spookiest skeletons, and of course dinosaurs, because yeah. And this is the Man Eater. Um, Man Eater is one of the easiest bosses in the entire game, even easier than the than the Buck. Like, he doesn't even, he's not even a threat in this game. Okay, so what I'm going to get here is, I'm using the, I'm going to use the chest, like, get the chest here, and get a hard upgrade, um, to increase, like, the amount of place kicks I can do, and it's, uh, in a very specific time that I'm doing that, um, so, there is another, like, there's a boss uh, right in the middle of the game called, uh, no, I'm actually not going to if you haven't uh, played the game, but we will see this boss anyways in like 10 minutes or something. Um, you need a, like, a very specific amount of uh, parts to do the blaze kicks. Also, I'm going to skip this uh, save point. Oh, I just realized I haven't saved in this run so far. I should probably do that at, this, at one point. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Grisalka. Also, like, I also call her like the fake water Undine, which is kind of silly now that I just realized it. Um, the basic strategy is like just shoot at it until it dies. It's like the classic cyber demon strategy you do in Doom. And that was like a super good fight. Um, like I didn't get the splash attack, which all other or what are they called? Uh, Maelstrom. Like if you get one of those attacks, yeah, it will kinda slow you down by a little bit. But that was perfect. So far, like the run is really good, except for like the giant skeleton fight. Okay. So this area, um, the giant swelling, has surprise, surprise, another boss called uh, the Goliath. So here is a skip that you can only do in Elvis. Like you can pretty much skip half of the area by just teleporting to the top platform. Um, otherwise, you would have to go around and do like a really slow path, which is pretty cool. Okay, so Goliath is the first boss that can actually one-shot us with a very specific set of attacks. Um, I'm using another combination of optical shots and max shots, and I'm using blaze kicks so I can I can actually deal enough damage to replenish my health. Okay, now I actually have to be careful. Um, okay. Using a blaze kick just for safety. Okay. Uh, I'm taking this <laughs> this healing uh, right there. It's usually a big time waste, but yeah. Like in when I do runs, I don't go for like any healing. Like usually, thankfully, like if you have to heal, it's not like a big uh, time waste per, per se. Like you only waste like two seconds at max. Which is pretty cool. Like, I know, like, other uh, DSVanias have, like, much longer animations, but this one is, like, super fast. 
Okay. Also, spike rooms. Never good. And this is pretty much like the worst thing that can happen in Albus and Shanoa. Um, so I'm cursed now. I can't use anything except for like backdash and jumping. And blaze kicks, I can use it as well. Um, the getting hit there costs like 10 seconds, which is kind of unfortunate, but I mean, that's sometimes that's the nature of this game. Like, if you're bad, you you kind of deserve to die, to be honest. By the way, the soundtrack of this game is amazing. But sadly, we don't hear much of it because, yeah. Like, if you can teleport around, then it's like, yeah, kinda. Kinda don't hear that much. So, this is uh, Grave Dockers. Um, so, this is one of the bosses where I can manip, where you can actually manipulate his AI by a little bit. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to slide down. So he doesn't try to jump onto me. Then he turns around and he uses his uh, pine cones. Uh, they kind of deal like a decent amount of damage. So that's why I don't want to get hit. Um, so another trick that I'm doing here is I'm actually uh, I can actually cancel the animation of certain attacks by just using a normal attack. Also, that is a really bad pattern. Kinda unfortunate, but... Yeah. Okay. So whenever he does this attack, I'm pretty much guaranteed he lose like, quite a lot of time. But yeah. That was kinda bad RNG right there, but whatever. Alright, uh, my heart count is surprisingly pretty high at this point. Um, usually I would have around 25 or something. Which is pretty cool. Um, not that it actually matters now. Because now I have like way too many hearts. But uh, like I will get another refill in the in the castle area. So yeah, um, Mystery Manor, this is pretty much like the f like first area where you can actually get an ending of this game. Um, of course it's a bad ending, um, but it's oh, it only counts for Shinola. Okay. So I will save here because um, in like a couple of marathon runs that I did here, I just died on this boss fight. Um, what I'm doing here is like I'm timing my blazing kicks like to a very specific time, so I deal as much damage as possible. And also there is like the iframes that come into play, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, like this, like pretty much like the blaze kick realizes this fight. Otherwise, this one would be super hard, but yeah. It's actually quite funny how I figured it out. Like, I was just... Like, I think, like, I, ju I just said, like, okay, um... I need to find an easier way, and then I just stood at the corner and tried. And he just uh, spammed his blaze kick, which is pretty cool. Okay, so... This is, uh, Barlow. Um... Barlow has four kinds of attacks. No, actually five of them. Um, you want him to freeze the floor if possible, but he gives me like a super bad pattern. Like he always uses like his electric barrier and the fire attack. Also, this is pretty much the best dialogue in the entire game. Okay, but this is the slowest attack as well. Um, okay. That was super bad uh, luck I got there. Um, 
the reason for like you, you don't want him to use like any of his punches um you just want him to like either freeze the flow or use a fire attack but yeah now this is pretty much like the, the real part of the game um like this is where movement is like the most important simply because you don't want to get hit by anything in there like most of the enemies deal around 50 to 70 damage so like in the beginning at least so yeah okay um underground library so the next boss is in this area and it's pretty much the hardest boss in the entire game um it's called Blackmore. I usually refer him as the Shadow Doggo, uh, because that's what he actually is. Um, I can like tell like quite a lot of stories, but uh, okay. I actually want to get the heart, uh, like the empty upgrade. So the hitbox for this boss fight specifically is. Um, it's not like the guy controlling the shadow, but like the shadow itself, which is good and bad at the same time. Um, since his uh, sh like his shadow just moves around, or like it just flickers. Um, sometimes you will just get hit by like a really bullshit move, and not much that you can do here. But yeah, this is pretty much like. One of the fights that that kind of makes or breaks run. Yeah. Okay, that was really bad. Um, also, yeah, this guy who shot you and I didn't save. Okay. Uh, I guess we're going to visit this fight again. So. Yeah, I kind of expected it to happen, but yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes like when you press like the when you try to cancel the boxes it doesn't save uh whatever i mean this run is a train wreck anyways now so i might as well just i mean screw it around a little bit also that's not like a huge time loss uh depending on like what rng i get on On Barlow. Okay, yeah, this is Globus. Um, Globus is like pretty easy attack to avoid, um, especially like with the blaze kick. Okay, but he doesn't give me at least like a super bad parrot now. Like last time. Yeah, perfect. See, that's like how the fight should go. Um, so let's retry this again. And this time I should probably be like super safe. Yeah, like Shadow Doggo is uh, kind of unforgiving, especially like for newer players of this game. I mean, there is a quick kill for wow, okay, poisoned. Okay, um, there is a quick kill for like that you can do as Shenoa, but like it requires you to to be really, really perfect. And yeah, Albus doesn't have any quick kills in the later part of the run. Just like some neat uh, RNG manipulation that you can do. Okay. 
Also, yeah. Sometimes when you press any additional button during text boxes or loading zones, you will use a blaze kick. I have no idea why it happens though. But yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh kind of messed it up somehow again. But yeah, now I actually hit the safe, so I will take your shadow. <sighs> Okay, that's what I want him to do in the beginning. So I can chain those two attacks. Or, I don't want to do that and again, yeah, like the shadow. The shadow is again flickering, so that's why I got hit with it by the teleport. I will take your shadow. But yeah, he he's quite successful successful at taking my shadow. Okay, that's what I want him to do. Sometimes when he turns around, he doesn't do any attacks, so that's why I'm usually ducking. But yeah, that's how the fight is supposed to go. So, I have lost. Right, we heard it. That, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I'm getting this uh, half refill just, uh, just for safety. Um, there's a specific room coming up um, that can either destroy me or like. Be absolutely easy. It's not me. this one. Also, yeah, due to the teleport ability, you can just uh, skip some puzzles. Um, there's another safe that I'm going to take here. Um, Which, in that <laughs> regards, didn't matter that much, since I got hit by a Nova Skeleton. So yeah, now like this is the part where like everything hits like a truck. And there is the first teleport that... Like, like the first and the only teleport that I, that I hit. Um, except for the ones in the monastery. Um, it lets me teleport back to this area where I can either decide to go for death or for the bo uh, the boss called Allegor. Um, we do Alleg uh, Allegor first, um, simply for like the routing. Like it's like in um, Shinoa. Uh, like in Shinoa's run, I would like you, you usually do death first because you want to get the a ring ring called the the death ring. Um, and since there is no menu for Albus, like most of the secondary characters, yeah, you kind of just keep the, uh, like you. I don't want to do like the one that is closer to to you Dracula. So yeah, sometimes teleporting through those uh, Spectre Swords um, can be quite difficult. Not difficult, but like you can get hit basically by it. Um, so yeah, next. This uh, guy. This guy you actually has four phases, but we are going to skip all of them except for the last one, of course. So we wait him until like he tries to stab us with his blade, and then we're right at his back and shoot at his, shoot at its eye. Um, 
So now I'm doing it like a combination of like optical shots and max shots and try to stay at the at close as close to the right as possible. Because if you do that, like he uses his phase three attacks instead of like his phase four. And his phase four attacks are kinda of devastating, so we don't want to do that. It's kinda a neat way to manipulate the AI. Because like like how this boss fight actually like, is split up is like in like diff the different kind of zones. In this uh in this area, um, so that's why you can. Uh, okay. That's why you can trick him into doing phase three attacks. Because like his back, like yeah, like like his back is pretty much like in two different loading zones. So that's why you can or, like attack zones. Then that's why you can do that. Okay. Okay, that is not good. So I will take the scrub save there. But I'm not gonna go into save because yeah. So yeah, uh, a neat thing about teleportability is like you can teleport through spikes for some reason. So that's why you sometimes have to, like why I actually have to avoid getting through areas with spikes. Okay, yeah, now the next fight is going to be death. Um, another save I'm going to do here. Also, thanks for the good luck with this man. So, yeah. Um, I duck in the beginning so he tries to attack me, because whenever he attacks that's the best thing that can happen. I like, already got hit there, which is... No bueno. But yeah, like I use a combination of blaze kicks and optical optical max shots. Uh, normal attacks are kind of useless against death. Like I can show you, like that only deals one damage. And optical shots is like actually like the best way to deal damage to it. But I'm trying to use blaze kicks in between. Again, like I want to optimize my DPS as much as possible. So now I'm entering the final area and my heart count is super low. Um, so I will grab an, another heart fill for Dracula. Um, it's like, it loses around 5 seconds at max. But yeah. Like so far as like as the run is optimized. Um, I cannot actually allow to lose um, five seconds, so that's why I usually don't go for it and like roll with whatever heart count I have. Like what I want, like the the amount of hearts that I want to have, like throughout this, uh, like for the final boss fight is around twenty-five to thirty. So yeah, I'm also kind of taking it slowly because sometimes, yeah, those Shadow Knights will hit you for no reason whatsoever. You know, like you so as as far as way as far away from them as possible. Okay, now I have more than enough hearts to defeat Dracula. Like, it's not even that. Uh, it's not really necessary, but it makes like this fight a little bit quicker. Like, you can essentially use uh, a lot of place kicks. So yeah, I always use a combination of uh, optical shot, smack shot, and a blaze kick, depending on what attack he does. If he spawns uh, to the far left or the right, I can't do that, so... So this is also like another point of the 
the run that can actually just uh, cost me the run by just having like super bad spawning positions. But luckily, like in every third cycle, he spawns in the middle by using uh, Fatal Ray. Okay, I didn't get the place kick in, but that's okay. So yeah, Dracula has two phases, like in most of the Castlevania games. Uh, this one is no exception. Um, in the second phase, I'm going to use uh, another combination of uh, like uh, optical shots and max shots. As I'm doing a diagonal teleport, because Dracula doesn't allow you to f uh, jump over him, because you you kind of forced to take the attacks. Uh, luckily, like if you do the if you like, if you teleport to the right spot, you can just uh, you can just like skip the attacks, especially like the bad attack that he's trying to do. Um, but yeah, like the wolf attack is fi fairly easy to deal with, unlike the bad attack. Also, yeah, uh, timing stops when he's dead. He didn't spawn a bat, that's good. Alright, right, time. Uh, yeah, uh, that was a crappy one. What, what was it? 34 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, okay, that was kind of kind of expecting that with like those three deaths and like the like having to backtrack to the safe. Man, that was a shit run. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, that was far from from perfect, but like, hmm. yeah, it's it's okay, it's all right. At least I went underestimate. Unlike other people. <laughs> wow, are you calling me out? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, I could have no, taken I... like another half an hour for like <laughs> just doing like some additional stuff, but yeah. Um. No, I was just, just joking, man. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, like for Albus mode. Um, it's quite an interesting run, also quite fast-paced, unlike Shinoa, and you can kind of compare it to Maxime from uh, Harmony of Dissonance, like with the movements and like the inputs that you have to do, which is like five or so, not a lot. Um, so, yeah. Um, can I give a quick shout out to my boy Gedrif and Crusade? I'm pretty sure they're not watching. I'm pretty sure they're not watching, but like, who gives a crap? Like that's like the moral that's like the moral support that like everyone uh, wants from their best best friends. Um Yeah. Um oh yeah, uh, another thing. Um I'm going to run this in a very specific European marathon. I'm not gonna call any names on it, but yeah, like we don't, like we don't support like any other marathons, right? ESA is the best. Oh, okay. When you're fine with it, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to run this game on ESA. So since uh, it got approved, so yeah, maybe I'm not going to choke as as much as uh, here but yeah um so anything else anything else that i uh, have to say no actually not i don't know how about let's go to the next run hell yeah all right so thanks guys for watching hope you enjoyed it so